welcome learners to our education videos in Earth and Life Science. Hopefully, you will learn a lot, think a lot, and explore a lot. Now, let's talk about Lesson 1 in Earth and Life Science, Origin and Structure of the Earth, which is our planet Earth. This is Sir Arnold from SDO Antipolo City. Now, let's talk about Earth. Earth is the only planet in the solar system known to harbor life. Tanging mundo lamang ang kaya mag-cater ng buhay. Our planet has the following. First, molten nickel iron core which gives rise to an extensive magnetic field which along with the atmosphere shields us from harmful radiation coming from the sun. Lahat ng yan ay nagiging dahilan upang ang Earth ay pwedeng magkaroon ng buhay dahil unang-una sa kanyang nickel iron core which is the foundation of the Earth and the atmosphere which serves as shield or barrier. That's why the Earth is called as the living planet. Just a part of the vast universe is the solar system. From the previous concepts way back to your junior high schools, we can identify the planets in the solar system in the given illustration. So from the sun, we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These are the planets which is composed of the solar system and the sun is the center of the solar system now here's a simple question what do you think are the characteristics of the planet earth that make it different from all the other planets ano nga ang kanyang mga katangian isa-isahin natin to mga ka-learners first is ito yung unang factor temperature in terms of temperature it influences how quickly atoms and molecules move. Ito yung mga indicators natin. We have the not enough of the factor, just right of the factor of temperature, too much of the factor, then situation in the solar system. Kapag not enough ang temperature natin, or tinatawag natin low temperature, it causes the chemicals to react slowly, which interferes with the reactions necessary for life. It can also cause the freezing of water, making liquid water unavailable. So, yan yung magiging indicator natin kapag medyo low yung ating temperature. Next, kapag average naman ang ating temperature, it seems like the light is limited to a temperature range of negative 15 degrees Celsius to 115 degrees Celsius. In this range, liquid water can still exist under certain conditions. Dito, medyo comfortable na tayo to live because it has a range of negative 15 degrees Celsius to 115 degrees Celsius. Now, what if the temperature is too much at about 125 degrees Celsius? It can cause the protein and carbohydrate molecules and the genetic materials such as DNA and our RNA start to break apart. So, medyo delikado yan kasi our body can be affected because of too much temperature. Also, high temperatures cause the quick evaporation of water which is the basic material na kailangan natin sa ating buhay. Situation in solar system surface only the earth planet surface in this temperature range. Subsurface, the interior of the solid planets and the moons may be in the temperature range. So that's the first factor which is the temperature, mga ka-learners. Now, let's talk the second factor, atmosphere. Our atmosphere, when it's not enough, small planets and moons have insufficient gravity to hold an atmosphere. The gas molecules escape to space, leaving the planet or moon without an insulating blanket or a protective shield. Kapag walang atmosphere, ang isang planet, it is open for some different kinds of debris in the solar system. Pwede siyang tamaan ng iba't ibang uri ng 
asteroids, or comets. Now, if the atmosphere is just right, just like for Earth and Venus are the right size to hold a sufficient atmosphere, Earth's atmosphere is about 100 miles thick. Yun yung kanyang kapal. It keeps the surface warm and protects it from radiation and small to medium-sized meteorites. Again, this atmosphere serves as our shield and barrier against external heavenly bodies like for example nga yung ating tinatawag na comets and asteroids. Now, if it's too much of the factor na magkaroon ng, ng thickness ng atmosphere, like for example in the planet Venus, 100 times thicker than the Earth's atmosphere, its, its effect to our planet especially on the planet Venus, is an entirely of greenhouse gases, making the surface of the planet too hot for life. The four giant planets are completely made of gas, which is the Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. They have atmosphere, but it is that uh, they have the thickest atmosphere ever in the solar system. Now, the situation in the solar system of the solid planets and moons, only Earth, Venus and Titan have significant atmospheres. Mars' atmosphere is about the same of the Earth's too small significant insulation and shielding. So that's the second factor, atmosphere, that makes the Earth a habitable planet. Let's talk about the third factor, which is nutrient. Nutrients used to be build and maintain an organism's body. In terms of the factor if the nutrient has not enough amount without chemicals to make proteins and carbohydrates, organisms cannot grow. Planets without systems to deliver nutrients to its organisms. Like for example, hindi mapeperform si water cycle or any volcanic activity which supports life. Pag walang mga ganong activity, it's hard for different kinds of organism sa planet Earth na magkaroon ng life existence. Also, these nutrients are spread to thin so that they are hard to obtain such as on a gas planet, life cannot exist. So, napakaswerte natin because we are, we are living on a habitable planet. Now, if the amount of nutrients is just right, all solid planets and moons have the same general chemical makeup. So nutrients are present. Those with a water cycle or volcanic activity can transport and replenish the chemicals required by living organisms. In short, smooth ang flow ng nutrients. The organisms have a sufficient supply of the nutrients needed to have the existence of life. Now, if the nutrients is too much in number, too much nutrients are not a problem. Hindi siya problema. However, too active a circula circulation system, such as the constant volcanism on Jupiter's moon, so yung ayo, yung kanyang moon, uh, masyado na tong laging active. That's why it interferes with organism's ability to get enough nutrients. So, hindi rin maganda masyado ang too much ang bilang ng nutrients kasi it can cause hyperactivity of different kinds the parts ng planets na meron yan. Then, the situation in the solar system in terms of surface, Earth has a water cycle, an atmosphere, and volcanoes to circulate nutrients which is a good indicator. Venus, Titans, Io, and Mars have nutrients and ways to circulate them to organisms. Any planet with subsurface water cycle and rock cycle can circulate and help to have nutrients for different kinds of organisms. Again, because of the nutrient supply na meron tayo, it makes the Earth a habitable planet. In terms of energy, kapag not enough ang bilang ng energy, when there's too little sunlight or too few of the chemicals that provide energy to cells, such as iron or sulfur, of course, organisms will eventually die. If the nutrients or the energy are just right, with the steady input ng light and chemical energy, cells can run the chemical reactions necessary for life. 
Therefore, again, smooth na naman ang magiging effect nito sa mga organisms na naninirahan sa isang planet. Kapag just right ang bilang. Too much of the energy, of course, yung light energy natin is a problem if it makes a planet too hot. Siyempre, sobrang iwanag, sobrang init. If there are too many harmful rays, such as UV rays or ultraviolet, too many energy-rich chemicals is not a problem. Okay? So, kapag marami naman tayong energy-rich chemicals, like for example, carbohydrates, proteins, hindi yan magiging problema. Pero pag too much light energy, Again, it can lead to a different kind of problem which is can bring hotness then leading to greenhouse effects. Now, the situation in the solar system, in terms of surface, the inner planets which is the Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars get too much sunlight for life. The outer planets get too much detail. So, mas malamig doon sa Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Unlike in Mars, Venus, Earth, and Mercury, ito yung, ito yung mga planets na nakakapag-absorb ng maraming light. Kaya may chance talaga ng life existence of different organisms. Again, Earth is the only place in the known universe confirmed, again confirmed, to host life and is the only one known for sure to have liquid water in the surface. These are the reasons why planet Earth is a unique one. Again, number one, it has a liquid water. Second, plate tectonics. And the third one is, it has an atmosphere that shelters it from the wars of the sun's rays. Earth is the only planet in the solar system that has a large amount of liquid water. 70% of the surface ng mundo ay covered ng tubig or frozen water in the form of glaciers. That's why if you will go outside ng planet natin and you will take a picture, Earth is sometimes called a blue planet. Planet Earth is habitable because of has the right distance from the sun. It is kept warm by insulating atmosphere. And it has the right chemical ingredients for life, including water and carbon. It can provide water, oxygen, useful biological products for human, and suitable weather and climate. Which is, lahat ng yan ay kailangan ng buhay para mamintin ang buhay ng organisms. Earth, Venus, and Mars have many similarities. Etong tatlong planetang to, which is, nearest to the sun, sila ay halos magkakatulad. In terms of number one, they all have, ter they all terrestrial planets. When we say terrestrial planets, mga planetang may mga lupa, made of solid rocks and silicates. Another similarity sila, they all have an atmosphere, which meaning to say, they all have protecting protective blanket or shield or barrier against external heavenly bodies. Third, they all almost have the same to rotate on their axis. Meaning to say, pare-pare sila ng ikot. Hindi man masyado nagkakalayo, pero halos magkakalapit yung kanilang pag-ikot. It depends upon their position in the revolution around the sun. Earth and Mars both have water. See? May tubig sa Mars. They all have carbon dioxide. And, last one, they all have landforms. These are the similarities ng Earth, Venus, and Mars. But, in the other hand, they also have differences. Earth, Venus, Mars differences are the following. Venus has no water, unlike in Earth and Mars. Number two, Venus and Mars don't have oxygen. And Earth has life forms. So yung, tatlo, yung tatlong yan ang pagkakaiba ng Earth, Venus, and Mars. Now let's try to understand the planet Earth. Here's a simple table showing the similarities and differences from Venus and Mars. 
we can provide some possible explanations from your observations using the information below. So we have the mass. Take a look. Mars of Venus is 4.87, the Earth 5.97, and the Mars is 0 0.642. Meaning to say, it's the mass of Venus and Earth are mostly the same or almost closed. In terms of diameter, we have the closed value for Venus and Earth also. In terms of density, we have Venus and Earth. And gravity, almost the same with Venus and Earth. And for the escape velocity in terms of uh, in units of kilometer per second, they almost have the same value, Venus and Earth. Surface pressure, we have the Earth and Mars. If we're going to check to check the mass, diameter, density, gravity, escape velocity, Venus and Earth are almost the same. That's why sometimes they are referred as twin planets. In terms of surface pressures, in terms of bars, in unit of bars, we have the Earth and Mars with the same co value. Composition of atmosphere, Venus and Mars have the same content of carbon dioxide, unlike on Earth, which is 77% of nitrogen. The major greenhouse gases, we have almost the same presence of GHG, which is carbon dioxide, the mean temperature, it's almost the same for Earth and Mars. Temperature of no greenhouse gases are present. May, um, dito nagkakalayo ng konti. Changes in temperature due to greenhouse gases. Dito rin po nagkakalayo because of the thickness of their atmosphere. Distance from the sun, we have the same or the almost, almost close na distance ito from the sun. Ranging 106 kilometers ang layo. Then, in terms of orbital period, ayan, medyo nagkakalay yan. Then, of course, it has something to do with orbital velocity. The length of the day, Earth has 24, 24 hours, unlike in Venus, which is 2,802 hours. So, doon na nagkakalay. Then, in terms of global magnetic field, there you are. It answers the no, yet, no and yes. Again, remember this. Planet Earth is considered habitable because of the following reasons. Number one, it has the right distance from the sun. Number two, it is protected from harmful solar radiation by its magnetic field. Number three, it is kept warm by an insulating atmosphere. And number four, it has the right amount of ingredients for life, including water and carbon. Remember also that Earth is different from other planets pa rin in a way that it is the only planet with liquid water on the surface. Earth, Venus, and Mars have many similarities. The all terrestrial planets or rocky planets made of solid rocks and silicates. They all have atmospheres. They all, all, they all have the same time to rotate on their axis. Earth and Mars both have water. They all have carbon dioxide. And they all have landforms. In terms of Earth, Venus, and Mars, ang pagkakaiba naman nila, Venus has no water. Venus and Mars don't have oxygen. And Earth has life forms. Again, we are the only planet na mayroong buhay. That's it mga kalearners. Hopefully, you've learned a lot from these educational videos that we have presented. Always remember, share your knowledge and apply your knowledge. You click the link below for the simple assessment that we have. Again, thank you so much mga ka-learners. So mga ka-learners, before we end this educational vlog natin for Earth and Life Science, don't forget to like the video, make a comment, then share this. And don't forget to subscribe. Again, subscribe tayo sa I Am Educado. Ito po ang link natin. Then don't forget to take the simple assessment on the link below. Thank you so much.